Bank Raceway at Ipswich in Queensland. We're here for the Gulf Western Oil Winter Nationals. It's the grand finale for the 400 Thunder Drag Racing Series. And on today's show, we are looking at RD Williams Excavator Parts Pro Slammer. It's a huge field entered. It's going to be tough to get into the eight car field to start with. And then it's going to be even harder to win the event. But for two guys, what they're looking at is each other because the 400 Thunder Championship battle has come down to Paul Mahayat, the defending champ, up against the king of Pro Slammer, John Zapier from Perth. Have a look at these championship points. Mahayat has a quite a handy lead. You know, Zap, well, he needs Paul Mahayat to not qualify to realistically have a shot. Ben Bray, Emilio Spinozzi and Victor Bray are really wrapped up in a tight battle for third, but Main focus, Mahayat v Zapier again. Oh, this is my first year tuning on my own. I've never tuned a blower car before this year, so, uh, you know, this one means, means more to me this year than it did last year. I had Billy Stockland on board helping us last year, but this year I've done it on my own, so uh, I'll uh, drive the wheels off this thing this weekend. We went out last night all geared up, ready to lay one down, and uh, you know, it got too cold and they canned it, so uh, we meant to go out at 10 to 12, I think, today, but the weather doesn't look good for that either, so hopefully we get one qualifier in today at least, and uh, we'll go into round one and face off whoever we need to and try and do our job. Yeah, look, the, the track temperature plays a big part in what we do and uh, the decisions we make, so I guess uh, qualifying, if we've only got one, we'll have to swing for the fences and try and go fast, and then I'll race the other guy in the other lane in, in uh, round one. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's, it's going to be a tough ask. Paul's been running good. He, you know, he was up here testing, running good numbers. So, But as we've seen in Sydney, doing good in testing and doing good on race days, two different things. So we're just going to see how it plays out. But uh, yeah, we, we just got to worry about going all the way to the final and winning the event. And uh, whatever happens to Paul, happens to Paul. So we can't control that unless uh, we're racing against him. So we'll uh, play it by him. Oh, it's critical. You've got to go out and qualify. If you muck up and you don't qualify, you're out. And that same goes for Paul, same goes for us. You know, I need to, I need to qualify strong in this pass. And, you know, we've got a, you know, some stuff that's not tested, but we're confident that it'll work. So we're just going to send the car down and hopefully we run a low 60. You know, the weather's good enough for those you know, for low 60 passes, but um, just whether the track holds it and whether the weather holds out to let us do it. Qualifying is just going to be critical. We lost a session yesterday, it didn't happen. The forecast says we're about to run now, but we're not sure whether we'll get the second one in. We just saw an interested uh, bystander there, Chaz Mostert from the Super Cheap Auto Mustang team out here at the uh, Gold Coast All Winter Nationals having a look. Now, there are way too many cars to fit into the eight car field in RD Williams Excavator Parts Pro Slammer. So every single shot here is gonna be critical. These guys don't know whether they're gonna get a second run or not. 
We've got uh, the Sigra rolling stock car of Jeff Graddon, and here is, well, unofficially the quickest car in the country. Scott McLean has run into the high 5.5 second zone with this car in testing. Yeah, 5.57 to be precise for Scott McLean. He is the dark horse this weekend, but right now with the way the weather is, the big question that the crew chiefs have here with these cars and where they set them up, do they go soft and conservative and hope they get into the field? But if they go too soft and not make the field, so you've got to still be aggressive but soft at the same time. There's so many questions. Answers will happen right here in the first pairing here in Q1 for Pro Slammer. I think if we look back across the season, the first session of Pro Slammer qualifying has always had cars literally spraying their shots everywhere. Uh, it's been very rare until Q3 that they've all had a handle on the racetrack. So this is going to be very interesting. Wheel standing all over the place was McLean. 5.77 for Graddon was the quicker at 3.99 kilometres an hour, but a 5.78 for uh, McLean. And that thing was on two wheels most of the time. Two cars, 5.70s, first pass. Oh, what do we know as commentators, Rob? Sunoco replay here. Will stand from McLean, a PB from Jeff Graddon as well, a 577. Now that's Saratoga. This Willow Bank Raceway track has got some serious bite as we see in this first pairing. It wasn't a perfect pass from McLean. Like, wheels in the air. He got a little bit of shake that he drove through as well. That is absolutely incredible and not what I expected here first up, but Jeff Graddon. PB, Q1. Matt Cavanagh, you're going to have an excited driver in the braking area. Yeah, Jeff Graddon's down here at the moment, and uh, what a way to kick off Pro Slammer. He's just trying to get the helmet off. 577, what a way to start off with quite... Awesome, awesome. We've been trying to run a 70 for that long, man. For that long, it's unbelievable. Let me just unclip this. We'll I'll let you go, because you've got to get that undone. We're going to get back to racing, but good luck. Thanks, guys. See ya. Man, <laughs> he is happy. Struggling with that hands device to get the helmet away, but a 577 PB, that's a great way to kick off uh, Pro Slammer qualifying. Now here's another guy that can, uh, well, throw down a number. He can definitely throw down a number. Paul Canuli backing up here on a solo pass. Has run into the 580 zone in this duster for Jansen Racing Engines. Now, we just seen those two pair of 570s. The talk before this weekend, you know, we are talking about record bump spots in Pro Slam with the oversubscribed build. 12 months ago, you cast your mind back, we had a record bump of 5.81 seconds here at the Gulf Western All Winter Nationals. I think it could be on the cards after what we just saw in that opening pairing. Well, here is the uh, the duster of Canerli. And look at that supercharger. It's not a screw-type supercharger. It's one of the only ones with the old roots type. But it gives him the advantage of lighter weight, isn't it? Hey, his, this car has, doesn't have the same sort of horsepower that it can produce from the screw blower style Pro Slammers. He is the only one running a roots blower car this weekend. It is a lighter car. It makes his power early on in the track, as you can see here. He has to pedal the car, Paul Canuli. He gets it to the finish line and runs a 639 at 338 kilometers per hour. I'm sure he would have been hoping for something a little bit quicker here. But Matt Cavanagh, you've got Scott McLean in the braking area. Yeah, I've come and grab Scotty McLean. Scotty, not a bad way to kick things off in your Winter Nationals campaign with a 78. No, we're happy with that. Maybe just good to make the field with this hanging around. And I don't think Darren was very aggressive. He just wanted to get to A to B to make sure we're in the top eight. And then we'll turn the wick up on it after that, mate. We can't wait to see you in Q2. No, nah, cheers. Thank you. Scott McLean's always got a smile on his face. Have a look at this in the Sunoco replay. That car... Oh. It really got into some tyre shaking. He was on and off the throttle at least two or three times. There was a lot of shaking. He drove there for a long time. But doesn't that show the pressure yeah. of this maybe one-shot qualifying? Because he wasn't going to just back off and shut off. He was going to get the best time he could in case it's good enough to get in the field. And you can see him feather that throttle too across there, trying to get the car to calm down and get it back under full power across the finish line. And it is all about getting the cars to the finish line. Because we do have this intimate weather, like there is no guarantee we're going to get that next qualifying session. So you want to get these cars to the finish line. As we see Trevor Smith here come forward now for Q1 in his HQ Statesman. And now Trevor Smith, he started the season off running in the 400 Thunder Series, but the last few events, he has been helping the guys over at Team Bray Racing. You know, throwing the spinners on the car and then giving the guys a hand, but he's back here behind the wheel of his car all the way from New Zealand, he's trying to get into this field here at Willow Bank Raceway. Well, yeah, the learning experience of working on those uh, TBR cars has uh, really started to show with this, this car of his. 
He's an oldie but a goodie. He really just wants to try and get it into the five-second zone, and then there's going to be a bit of an upgrade coming. Oh, loose. Loose. None of them are giving up, though, are they? 6.49, 325 kilometres an hour. He was off the throttle a long time, Mark. He was. Let's look at the Sunoco replay here just to see exactly what happened with Trevor Smith. So the car launches up on revs, gets out strong in the 60 foot, and starts to shake the tyres. You can see the chatter marks on the track as well. He got back on the accelerator, got it to the finish line, and put him into the field at the moment. Yeah, you'd be uh, fairly optimistic to think a 6.49 will hold for the, uh, for the field, so you know that Trevor Smith will be hoping that there's another qualifying session. Yeah, got Trevor Smith down here. Probably wasn't the run you were chasing. The track is very tight at the moment, very grippy, and a lot of guys just trying to overcome that tyre shake. Yeah, it was a bad tyre shake. We tested last weekend. We adjusted a few things, and um, hey, hopefully next run we'll get it down. It's good to have you out here from New Zealand. Yeah, no, we're enjoying it, and Team Bray have been awesome to us. They look and ask us the whole year. I can't thank Victor and Ben enough for what they've done for us. All right, so good luck with the rest of the qualifying. Cheers, mate. Well, speaking of Team Bray, in beside the AC Delco uh, Monaro of for Mark Hinchelwood is the Team Bray Gulf Western Oil Corvette, driven by none other than Ben Bray. He's in a battle for third spot in the championship. Up against Emilio Spinozzi and his dad, Victor. Well, both these cars here on track are going through some changes. Benny Bray, they've upgraded to a four-speed gearbox. Mark Hinchwood, these guys have been playing around the suspension. The car's been launching, going to the right. So they're trying to get it to launch a bit straighter. So that's their, their goal at the moment, getting the car to launch straight. Well, Benny, they're trying to learn what this car wants with the new four-speed here. They've only got one event under their belt. They would have liked the extra qualifying passes that we've missed out on. But it all comes down here in qualifying session number one for Pro Slammer. Look at the massive crowd in here at Willowbank Raceway at Ipswich for this Gulf Western Oil winner nationals. Oh, Hitchelwood straight across the saddle line. Good thing that Bray was out of there. He didn't have a very happy run either. A 6.39 with a 1. That's uh, probably going to put him uh, right back there with uh, Canuli. In lieu of the replay, you can see Hinchelwood just turn and went across the lane. Luckily, Benny Bray was streaking away. He had issues as well, only 6.39 seconds. Let's have a closer look here on the Sunoco replay to Mark Hinchelwood. The car launched, front wheels went up in the air, then he started to spin the tyres, and then obviously he shot across into Benny's lane as it turned. And a very, very lucky man there, Mark Hinchelwood, that Benny Bray was streaking away. Hinchelwood has to hope for a second qualifier. Ben has to hope he was quick enough. No, it's not the pass Benny Bray wanted, but you know, he had a couple of stabs at the throttle, though. Yeah, no, nah, I did. It drove out. I was a little underpowered, rattled pretty early in the pass. Um, I had to pedal it. Then with the auto shifter deal, you got to learn how to short shift off a button. I uh, got it back in there, got to throttle back down, and then it rattled at the top of the top end. I think probably not enough wing in the car as well. So, you know, the experience uh, of driving got me to the finish line, but the experience tuning didn't. Oh, well, it's good to see you out in the field anyway. No, nah, thank you. Here is John Zapier. He has to put down a good pass here to keep his championship hopes alive. Man, oh man, it is going to be tough. He is uh, against the RD Williams excavator parts of Stephen Ham, and this car, this car, right through the lead up testing, etc., has been absolutely flying. Yeah, Stephen Ham 12 months ago actually top qualified here at the Gulf West and All Winter Nationals in this very car. So he, he knows what it takes to get down this sort of racing track here at Willowbank Raceway. John Zapier, though, he's got a chance. He's got a tiny, tiny glimmer of hope to sneak that championship away from Paul Mahat. It starts right now. We've had six cars down so far in qualifying Pro Slammer. These guys will make number seven and eight, giving us a bump spot. Ham comes out hard, but Zap's in all sorts of trouble. Ham will run a 5.70.404, but John Zapier, 6.26.402. Oh, he is now under threat. Yeah, Steve Ham, that's uh, number one qualifier after one session. Stuart Rowland, good job, mate. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot of work. Uh, Steve and I worked pretty hard uh, since the testing and, and through to today. He made some falling changes since testing and... They did exactly what we expect them to do, so we feel okay with that. So we hope for a 69, obviously, if it wants to run. Still a few cars left. Is it going to hold? Uh, I doubt it. Paul's coming. Surprise, John. You know, he hasn't had the laps. We were fortunate enough to test. 
But yeah, we'll see. It'll, it'll get us in the field, we hope. Yeah, I'm just grabbing these drivers they come in. Stephen Ham, you've gone to number one so far, that 5-7, that's a good start. Oh, mate, it was loose out there. We just needed to back it on down. Uh, Royal Lubes, RD Williams and Queensland Rock Breakers, we just plotted on down and it stuck to the track, lucky, because it was sketchy up the top end and shoots out early. Well, you got yourself a race car today. Oh, well, fingers crossed. Hopefully we get one in later. Well, Mark, we've got three cars in the 570s and there's a gap back to six seconds. There's nothing in between at the moment. They're either getting it right or getting it wrong. Well, that's it. We've got eight cars in the field at the moment, but these two guys will make number nine and ten on track. And Paul Mahayat, all he has to do is qualify to get that championship. Well, if he no qualifies, pressure. he's going to be hard to beat, you know, but it's, yeah. it's yeah, he's probably still got to go maybe around. It just depends on what happens with Zapier. I mean, at, at the moment, a six-second pass, you would not have expected to qualify at the Gulf Western or Winter Nationals in R.D. Williams' uh, Pro Slammer. Well, how good is Jeff Graddett's 577 looking from the opening pairing at the moment? How, it was absolutely killer. Marty Dak, though, all the way from Western Australia, moving forward. This car qualified last year in our quickest ever field in Pro Slammer, ran to the 570 zone. So he's got the power on board. He can do something special here. And what about the guy that was just leaning over the engine, Mark Rowe? He's one of the most ex experienced uh, tuners and advisors in supercharged methanol engines in the country. Mahoyets being the supercharger but still runs a 580 at 371. Dak was on and off the throttle early but there's dramas all round in Pro Slammer. Yeah, down here with uh, Skip from Paul Mahayot's crew, mate. You guys got some work to do. Looks like it lifted the blower off it. Yeah, it looks like it, mate. Listen, it's good to get the first one out of the way. Um, we were looking to go a little bit quicker than that, but obviously pushed the blower at about a thousand feet. So we've got a little bit of work to do. It depends how the rest of the field runs out, but well, look at the, in. at the moment. I think you're in fourth, uh, so you're in the field after the first session. That's the main thing. That's it. Have a look at this off the start line. Well, Hyatt got out nice and clean, but uh, up hard on the wheelie bars, up and down a couple of times was Dak, and that absolutely wrecked his run. Yeah, the front of the shot here in the snooker replay, watch Paul Mahayat as well, because there's a bit of an explosion, just a popular supercharger. Just there, the built up pressure under the manifold there, escaping through the burst panel, and he had a bit of a pedal job as well, Paul Mahayat, which I didn't notice previously, but you can see that big popular supercharger, they will have a bit of work back in the pits. Paul Mahayat's down here in the braking area now, you've just come down, you've popped the blower off at about a thousand foot, but you've done a 580, which puts you in the field after Q1. Yeah, it wasn't, uh, didn't really expect to blow the, knock the blower off it, but uh, 580, it puts us in number four, so uh, if there's uh, another one this afternoon, we'll go for it. If not, we're in the game. Well, the weather gods, it's in their hands right now. 100%. Thanks, guys. Well, Paul Mahayat, he's uh, got to be feeling more comfortable than John Zapier at the moment. That car looks strong to half track, and then, you, as you said, there's a little off of the throttle, and next minute, you know, we had a supercharger explosion. So that wraps up round one of qualifying as the rain arrives here at Willowbank Raceway on day three of the Gulf West Norwinter Winter Nationals. And that rain was enough to stop any further qualifying in uh, Pro Slammer. It meant that, well, Mark Hinchwood there, he was uh, then relegated to selling merchandise for the rest of the weekend. He didn't get into the field. Victor Bray didn't get in, didn't contest that session, didn't, and there was no other session. Have a look at it. Our top eight, Stephen Ham, number one qualifier again. Jeff Graddon, Scott McLean, Paul Mahayat, all strong. And then Marty Dack, John Zapier, Ben Bray and Paul Canooley with six second times. They would all be feeling quite, quite lucky that they've got into this field but they are all quality cars and quality drivers, Mark. We are going to have an unbelievable three rounds of elimination racing when we come back to the Gulf Western Oil Winter Nationals after the break. It's been almost a decade since a supercar and a drag racing vehicle faced off against each other down Willowbank Raceway's famed quarter mile. But when Tickford Racing and their star driver Chas Mostert got a call from Team Bray Racing to square off against Ben Bray and his Toyota Solara, it was an opportunity too good to refuse. Yeah, probably not a lot for me to lose. Uh, yeah, look, this is definitely out of my comfort zone. Obviously, we have race starts on weekends and supercars, but... Uh, yeah, we normally race over 20, 
thousand plus laps. So uh, it's going to be quite hard for me. Supercar's not the easiest thing to get off the line. Um, I just hope I don't stall and make a silly goose of myself. Uh, I've got to stick it to him because um, something Chad doesn't know about drag racing is you've only got to get to the finish line once. You don't have to pass it 30 times to find it. So um, I just plan on getting there first the first time. The exhibition races were part of Century Battery's cross promotion of their sponsorship with their respective outfits, as well as the sponsorship of the upcoming Century Battery Super Sprint at nearby Queensland Raceway. The pair were to face off three times across the weekend, two of which were to be on handicap. The first race was on Friday night and saw the pair go head to head. It was Bray who used his quarter mile expertise to clear away before buttoning it off early to a 9.6 second at 174 km an hour pass. Despite almost stalling on takeoff, Mostert powered on to record a very respectable 11.73 at 213 km. On Saturday morning for the second race, Chas Mostert would leave first with a 4.6 second handicap against Bray. This time, Mostert proved to be too good for his turbocharged opposition as Bray could only muster an 8.40 loss. Mostert, 10.78 seconds at 216 km an hour for the win. Unfortunately, the rain abruptly ended the final drag car supercar showdown, but it was all fun and games for both drivers at the end of the day, and the camaraderie and respect from both motorsport disciplines was extremely high. Yeah, no, it was a good deal like that. The, the camaraderie and all that to bring the sport together, like with the V8 supercar, the drag race, it's pretty cool to see the fans um, attached to it all. It's been a lot of fun, and Chad's a good guy. And look, I thought it would be a little bit mixed. Obviously, you know, some people that follow their sport are just through and through. But, I mean, to see the supercar here and people come and taking photos of it, and, uh, you know, it's more of a circuit car than what it is a, a drag racing car. It's, uh, it's been very, very uh, warm welcome. So, for me, it's, it's awesome. And it's good to see how much the cross-reference of the fans there is out there. You know, drag racing fans, and they're also fans of circuit, and vice versa. So, it's, uh, it's pretty awesome to see just Australian motorsport in general uh, getting behind all of it. And what a great initiative from our friends over at Century Batteries this weekend, bringing together two of our most popular, respected racers in Benny Bray and his pro slammer and Chaz Mostert in his supercar. You're having a bit of fun at Willow Bank Raceway here at the Gulf West and all Winter Nationals. And our neighbours just across the road at Queensland Raceway will have the Century Batteries Super Sprint coming up as well in that championship. But right now, let's get back our focus to the 400 Thunder Pro Slammer Championship. We've got eliminations coming up, Rob. And what eliminations they are going to be. Have a look at this. Our top qualifier, Stephen Ham, to take on Paul Canuli. Paul Mahayat, Marty Dack, Mustang to Mustang. Jeff Gratton against Ben Gray. Scott McLean against John Zapier. There are no easy races because it is a new day. The sun is shining. The track is so, so tight. And every single pairing is a balls in the air type effort to see what lands. I think you've nailed it right there, Rob. It really is. Any racer can win this category here today. It is a brand new day. It brings this brand new set of challenges for the teams. Stephen Ham, he was the number one qualifier last year. Guess what? He went out round one of racing, overstepped the mark. Number eight qualifier got the upset win. That is what Paul Keneally is looking to do right now. Here we go, round one of RDW Excavator Parts Pro Slammer. The championship's on the line, but these guys aren't worried about that. These guys are just looking for a first round win to book a place in the semifinals and be one step closer to winning a Gulf Western Oil Winter Nationals. For Jensen Racings, it is Paul Canuli. Got the lighter car, got the Roots type supercharger. Not as much horsepower in the top end, but it accelerates over the first half of the racetrack probably quicker. You're in the money. Usually these sort of races, you'll see the roots blow, blow car get out on the screw blower car, but the screw blower cars will come home a little bit stronger. Let's see how this plays out here in round one. Stephen Hare moving forward here, about to bump his car into pre-stage. All superchargers are simply an air compressor, but these two are very different designs. They go about their business in a different way and provides their horsepower at different areas of the rev range. So, can we see a 560 from Stephen Ham? That's what he was looking for in qualifying. Well, that went 
to the script. Canuli was out in front and Stephen Ham had to run him down with a 571 at 410 kilometres an hour over a valiant 589 from Canuli. Half track, it was on. The Sunoco replay here. Canuli had the whole shot at half track. They were side by side, but the power of Stephen Ham, he took the top end charge and he got the win goes through to the semi-finals and doesn't allow it to happen two years in a row with this car. Yeah, down here with uh, Stuart Rowland from Steve Ham's crew, 571. This thing's a bit of a bracket car this weekend. Yeah, we've uh, we struggled with the suspension, shook the tyres a little there, but, you know, the tracks got a lot hotter. Their setup was for, you know, 15 degrees cooler, but that's cool. It is what it is, and uh, good to get a win and hopefully move forward and keep going from there. There was a little puff of smoke out of the right-hand side of the car. I'm not sure if you saw it or not. Any ideas on what that might have been? Uh, yeah, that's yeah, saw that. Yeah, definitely. You know, all it can be is a piston yeah, at the end of the day, but let's hope that's not the case. We don't think we're that lean. We, we reckon we've got a little bit up our sleeves, so... That was the same tune-up as last night, so just ran it again, just A to B. Well, mate, good job. We'll see you back for the semis. Thank you very much. Stephen Ham certainly does have round one under his belt. Mate, you've gone 571 after that 70 yesterday. You got yourself a bracket car. <laughs> we needed to uh, just repeat from yesterday, basically, A to B. You know, it's warmed up a bit today. You know, the air's died off a bit. A to B, go rounds. That's the plan today. Well, you got yourself a win. We'll see you in round number two. Yeah, against Paul. Yippee. <laughs> Well, he's already he's counting the chickens because he's saying he'll be up against Paul Mahat. That's not necessarily the case. Anything can happen yeah. here. We know that. I think Marty Dack will, uh, will try and stop that from happening. <laughs> well, Ben Bray is uh, got an underdog tag on him here because he qualified fairly modestly. In other words, snuck into the field with a 6.3 second pass. He is up against Jeff Grattan, who ran 5.7 in qualifying. Except that what we're saying is it's a whole new day and that doesn't matter much. It really is, and the track is completely different to what it was yesterday as well. It's a it's a warmer day today. It was really cold yesterday. So these pro slimmers, they're, they're very uh, temperamental to those sorts of track conditions as well. And we heard from Ben Bray. They're trying uh, a four-speed transmission this weekend. It's a, a further evolution of this Gulf Western Oil Corvette. Uh, and Jeff Graddon is very comfortable with the setup he's got in that uh, very unique Chrysler car. Yeah, Saratoga for Jeff Graddon. You don't really see that body style too often driving around on your streets, but I like it. It's, look, at the, look at the shape of an aerodynamics there for uh, Jeff Grattan. It is a wedge. And he'll be trying uh, to drive a, a wedge in this championship battle. He doesn't care whether Paul Mahat or, uh, or John Zappia wins the title. He wants to win the Winter Nationals. Graden was out in front of Benny Bray, but Benny Bray will get the win. 6.44 seconds, 366 kilometers an hour. Graden rolls through for a 12 second pass, 110 kilometers an hour, but that was a weird race. I can't wait to watch that Sunoco replay here because Graden was out in front of him. You can see Graden here in stage. He launches and he gets all oh, shaking. You see the shake inside that car. Benny Bray streaking away for the win. It was very subdued celebrations on the start line by the Gulf Western Oil teams when the 644 came up. They like the wind light, but the ET is still a serious worry for that team. Well, Ben Bray still got work to do. Yeah, we got Ben Bray out of the car here, Benny. Probably not uh, the best win ever, but you got down there and you're going through to the semis. Yeah, the uh, Gulf Western Oil's Corvette behind me here. It's uh, not something real happy with it. Uh, Dad did pick up when we warmed it up that it had an electrical issue. I had to take it to the start line. I probably had enough time to change everything electrical sitting up there in the sun, but that's how it goes. I got the W. I'm sure my boys will turn it around and make it right for me next, next round because I can guarantee I won't get a walk in the park like that again. Come on, mate. You can still get that gold Christmas tree. Yeah, that's all I'm here for. I don't turn up to lose. Fairly driven man is young Ben Bray. Let's have a look inside the car, Mark. You can see the whole shot from Grant, but Benny, it, it was just seemed a bit slow. So I think the electrical issue there that he just spoke about was rearing its, rearing its ugly head for the team on this pass. That must be really hard because you, you rush around to the staging lanes because you've got the call, you, you wanted to replace something. Then there's a delay and you sit in the staging lanes for ages and it could have all been done. But that's drag racing. Now, what about this one? This is the one we talked about early. This has got to be the matchup of the round for my money when you put the quickest car in the country in unofficial testing, that is Scott McLean, up against, well, Mr. Pro Slammer, John Zappier in the Fuchs Danani Hot Shots uh, HQ from Perth, Western Australia. And he's the king of the slammers, that's for sure. But didn't show it in qualifying. 
Zapier, right? They're great on board shots of John Zapier. They're backing up. So we do have the unofficial quickest car in the lane besides Zapier. Zapier is the national record in Pro Slam of 5.60 seconds. So it is the officially quickest car against the unofficial quickest car here in round one. Yeah, well, Scotty McLean, uh, originally out of Darwin, now living on the Sunshine Coast, runs his car as a privateer. Uh, desperately on the uh, corporate hunt at the moment uh, for his planning for the new Pro Slammer season. Wants to have a real red hot crack at the championship. Uh, but mad keen to secure a partner and of course John Zapier. Man, he's got a sponsorship book that's got many, many pages because he is such a successful racer. I think he's 11 time champion now, John Zapier. You can see him bringing the car into pre-stage here. He has to win this race to have a chance of a 12th. There's a bit of a weird rev there from Zapier in stage. There we go. Jumps in. Oh, Zapier's overpowered the racetrack. How quick is this man? McLean, 578, 411 kilometres an hour. Man, you don't see John Zapier lose in round one too often, but it's happened here in RDW Excavator Parts Pro Slammer. Yeah, the Sunoco replay here. Look at John Zappi. He was very aggressive getting the car into stage, and then it was very aggressive on the hit as well, just up and spin. You could see him trying to regather it there, but it was all to no avail. As Scotty playing streaks on for the win, but on board with John Zappi. You could hear the car pedal as he uh, tried to get it down the track. He was steering it as well, but it was all to no avail. As Scotty playing gets the win here, round one, and the championship dream for John Zappi comes to a close. I don't think anybody expected that. John Zapier blows the tyres off at the hit, but you know what? Scott McLean earned at 578. Good win, Darren Mayer. Yeah, we were looking for that. Uh, there was a person that expected that. I expected that. Yeah, we were really uh, focused. Scotty's been working really hard to get this, and uh, we were due to beat those guys. Awesome. Good job, mate. Yep. See you later. Thank you. Yeah, we're down here with Scotty McLean. I've been told not to let him dance around. He, uh, he's not allowed to dance around at all, but he is excited. We're just trying to get the suit off him at the moment. He's done a 78 again. Look, we can't get this suit off. He's too excited. That's how he is. He's been working out. Look at the guns on him at the moment. Scotty, you've got to be pretty happy about that when you take out the champ. Stoked, man. Really happy. Um, some hard work starting to pay off and um, just feel great, Matty. I mean, look at this. Sunday, winter nationals. Couldn't get any better, mate, than you know, this guy I grew up watching here at the track like everybody else. and. Finally got to knock him off and feels absolutely fabulous. Well, you got Benny Bray in the semis. Yep. No, I look forward to that. So, star line up today, mate, but one at a time. No worries. Good luck. Thanks, Matty. Well, Mark, you picked Scott McLean as your dark horse for the event, and he's living up to that at the moment. Uh, that was a big win in round one. Upset win there for Scott McLean going through to the semi finals here at Pro Slammer, the Golf Western Oil Winner Nationals. You can see the crew. Happy, happy there. Where else would you want to be on a Sunday in June but here at Ipswich? Here is the second time Australian Pro Slammer champion. It is Paul Mahat from Oits Mustang and, uh, of course, running for Mack Trucks and uh, Komatsu. Man, oh, man, he knows he's got it wrapped up. Now he can start laying them down. He doesn't have to be conservative. He can start chasing numbers. Barney Dack is no easy beat. The driver from Perth can run very, very quickly in that car, and Paul Mahat will be aware of it. But his mindset has to be, well, it's got to be affected, seeing that John Zapier is out of there, and he is now champion again. Two in a row. That was another great race. I thought there for a while Paul Mahat was in strife, but a 571, 405 kilometres an hour. That car is so strong in the second half. Marty Dack, absolutely great job from the uh, Western Australian team. Yeah, good pass. It looks to Noco replay. This is probably the brace of the round. And this time Paul Mahat gets a win, goes 571. Marty Dack, 590 in the lane beside him. It wasn't enough. He had the wheels up. He threw everything he could at Paul Mahat, but the now, two-time champion goes through to the semi-finals. Man, what a job from Paul Mahat and the entire Moitz team. Two-time champion, 100% record at the moment. Two from two.
I tell you what, Paul Mahayat, you've got to be happy. All you had to do was go to this race. You've got your second consecutive championship. Thanks a lot, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, we worked hard this season for this. Um, you know, like we were learning last year and uh, we did this on our own without any crew, uh, crew chief and tuner. Uh, big shout out to Moitz, Kamatsu, Mac, BAC Tools, uh, Proline Racing, everybody that helps make this happen. I love you guys. Thank you. Well, the pressure is off. Paul Mahayat, he is going to the semi-finals where he will face Stephen Ham. It's not going to affect the championship. He can actually go and try and run a 550 if he wants to. Ben Bray is going to be up against Scott McLean. That's the semi-final in RDW Excavator Parts. Pro Slammer here at Willowbank for the Gulf Western Oil Winner Nationals. Come back with us after the break because that semi-final, well, what a pair of races we've got. Welcome back to Willowbank Raceway at Ipswich in Queensland. It's the Gulf Western Oil Winter Nationals and we're heading for the semi-final of RDW Excavator Parts Pro Slammer. And uh, Mark Allen, this class always throws it up. But have a look at the quality of the four cars we've got in this semi-final. Well, this matchup right here, there was only one thousandth of a second separating these two cars in round one of racing. Paul Mahad had lane choice by 0 0.001 of a second over Stephen Ham. 0, 0, 001. You don't get much closer than that. If they can run side by side like that on this pass, man, we are in for something. Paul Mahat, he has the advantage. He's got the championship under his belt. And very satisfying for him, he said, because he's done this as the tuner. Tuned it himself. And there's, there's a story there, Mark. Well, there is. When, when you talk about tuning this car yourself as a driver, in between rounds of racing, you only get about an hour and a half between rounds of racing. He's, he's then worrying about clutch setup, fuel setup, suspension setup, chassis, ignition, launch RPM, shift points. He's got all those sort of things to worry about and then worry about his own driving as well. So that's why he was saying, you know, it is a gratifying moment this season to get the championship doing it himself. And of course, last year he had Billy Stockland, one of the absolute best in the world, calling the tuning shots on that car. And, you know, there were some people that said, of course he won, because he had Billy Stockland. He's won it this year without him. Steve Ham, well, what a team he's put together. Number one qualifier last year. Number one qualifier this year. Can he go to the final? He's going to have to knock out the two-time champ to do it. Seven zero four hundred and twelve. It was only in the last few metres that the speed really made the difference. 5.77 for uh, Mahayat, but he was down in that top yeah, end speed. Yeah, Mahayat was nosed over, and when I say nosed over, it's, it's lost speed across the finish line there for a reason unknown. At the moment, but on board with Stephen Ham getting the win. That was a pretty straight pass from Pro Slammer perspective. I didn't see much steering on that steering wheel here. Let's look at the behind here, Paul Mahayat. It was out strong, that was side by side. I can't see any issues there with Mahayat's car, but Stephen Ham, he will go through to the final of Pro Slammer and takes out our new two-time champion in the process. Oh, Stephen Ham is down here and he's just getting the headgear off. Stephen Ham, you put a delay box in this, you can almost go and race modified, I think. 570 again, but you're going through to the final. Queensland is good to you. Oh, mate. <laughs> I honestly didn't want to race this bloke. You know, um, the nerves prior to that run were just insane. And um, we wooed it up a little bit more because we thought the track was a bit greasy and hit the motor a bit harder. So well done, Stu Rowland, done a great job. Royal, RD Williams, Queensland Rock Breakers. It's a good day. We're going to the finals, yeah? Well, I'll let you go and shake Paul Mahayat's hand. Thank you very much, mate. Yeah, Paul will be disappointed, but he knows that he's already got the big one. He's got the main goal. You know that 45 jet that I opened? <laughs> Just went like this. Yeah, I shot I one. I need it on a bucket. I need I it on a button. Well, I shot him and my car nosed over <laughs> and he went, <laughs> we will peg to win. I think we'll get Paul Mahay up in the commentary box. He analysed it perfectly. Yeah, I, I, I like the uh, tuning terms as well. We wooed it up for that round of racing. It's from Stephen Ham. We go to our next pairing now. Who's going to face off against Stephen Ham in the final? Will it be Scott McLean in the right side of the screen or Benny Bray to the left side of the screen? 
Well, Benny Bray just did a very small burnout in the Gulf Western Oil Corvette, so not sure whether he's got some sort of problem. He, they talked about a, an electrical problem in the first round of racing. Here he is in the semi. They would have had time to uh, replace that gear out, whether it was points box or whatever it is going in there. Man, those things run so many electronics these days that it's hard to keep up with. Well, usually in that sort of instance, they won't go looking for the problem. They'll just take everything out and replace everything and then worry about what the issue is after the event. Just replace it all and go, go home racing. So that, that's usually what happens anyway. Scott McLean, he uh, is very, very serious about Pro Slammer. He used to run a two-car team with, with his Pro Slammer and a Pro Alcohol Funny Car. Went, no, I'm stretching myself too thin. I'm going to concentrate it all on the Slammer. That's the big crowd favourite. And he's, uh, he's setting himself up to uh, have a real crack at the championship next year. Ben Bray for Century Batteries, Gulf West Oil, uh, Speed Flow, all a range of uh, sponsors of the TBR, Team Bray Racing. You can see Benny's left thumb there going onto the button on the steering wheel. That'll hold the car in place as he mashes that throttle and launches. Scott McLean will go to the final. 5.79 at 4.11. 5.84 at 4.06 for Ben Bray. Bray took it to him. He took it to him, all right. That was a great race here between the two drivers. Let's look at the Sunoco replay. Benny Bray, you see that finger let go of the button as he launches. He had a pedal there, Rob. That's the issue for Benny. That's why McLean streaks away. I'll tell you right now, both Scott McLean and Stephen Ham in the final pro slammer, neither have actually won an event in pro slammer. So we're going to have a first-time winner here today. Regardless of which way it was, that early lift for uh, Ben Bray cost him. Scott McLean got a little bit loose and wiggly down the second half. But the bottom line is that, uh, well, McLean will be going there and Darren Meyer is doing the tuning and doing it to perfection. McLean v Ham in the final round. I don't think anybody expected that coming into this event, but Darren May, you doing the job this weekend? Yeah, well, we're doing our best. I just got uh, to say this. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I think that's excitement from Darren Mayer there. Mate, the big pearly whites are out. You are going to finals here at Winter Nationals. Yeah, love it, man. I'm excited. Um, dream come true actually to get here to make the finals and see how we go we need to turn it up a bit to chase hammy down but look out hammy here we come for you buddy well, good luck we'll see you then thanks maddie cheers everyone well it looks like darren may root up the uh, tune up on that car as well because we're headed for a unbelievable final stephen ham scott mclean one or the other is going to be first round winner in pro slammer what a way to go at the winter national Here we go, heading to the final of RDW Excavator Parts Pro Slammer. The Gulf West North Winter Nationals always throws it up. We've had a huge crowd, a long event. We've had some stoppages with rain across the early days. Weather's been perfect today, but still some incidents on track has put the schedule behind. We'll be running the final at night mark. That's gonna make some little differences, but let's see the road to the final because Steve Ham is headed for his, uh, well, first Winter Nationals final in the RDW uh, Camaro. He took on Paul Canuli. Now Canuli, lighter car, accelerates very quickly in the first half of the racetrack. But it was all Stephen Ham here in round one. The top qualifier goes through, went through to the semi-final. Ran a great 570 pass again here in round one of racing as we moved into the semi-final runs, Rob. Yeah, Paul Mahayat had the championship under the belt, but he wanted the final uh, position as well. Great race, right through, and at the very, very end of the racetrack, Ham was able to pull it out. Yeah, they put him through to the final here at Pro Slammer. He's looking for his first ever event victory at Pro Slammer, and the man he's going to be facing will be Scott McLean. Yeah, Scott McLean in the McLean Motorsport Monaro. He has been looking strong all weekend, but he had to take on John Zapier. 
Zapier needed this to keep the championship alive, but it went up in smoke, literally. Yeah, Scott McLean streaked away for a win. There goes 577 in round one at racing, and then he went through to the semi-finals where he faced off against Benny Bray. Benny Bray, well, he's appeared to have his electrical problems fixed. It sounded strong in the burnout. But McLean, very consistent again, ran another great 578 this time to go through the final. It wasn't enough to get lane choice, but he's in the final anyway. So that's where we're heading. The final of RDW Excavator Parts Pro Slammer. Willow Bank looks absolutely fantastic with a full house under lights. Scott McLean for McLean Motorsport in the blue Mustang. A little bit squirrely in the burnout. And of course, he is going to be taking on uh, Stephen Ham. Now, Ham missed the last round of the championship in Sydney a month ago because uh, he was home with his wife for the birth of their second child. So I'm just thinking, we've been there, Mark. This is the first month of a new baby at home. How tired is this guy going to be by now? <laughs> he would have had no sleep. And not only that, he's got a pro slammer, so I'm sure those guys would have been working some long hours in the shed as well. He's been, he's, he's been gone a month with no sleep at all. <laughs> That's what it, I'm going to call. <laughs> it will all be worth it if he can get the wind light over Scott McLean. McLean, the privateer with the huge grin that everybody just loves. Uh, so passionate about his uh, racing. Really do hope he's successful in uh, securing a corporate partner for the new season because he can take it to Paul Mahat. He can take it to uh, John Zapier. He can take it to all of them, including Stephen Ham. Who's got it here? Who's got the winner nationals? who is going to collect that 400 Thunder gold Christmas tree. Interesting fact for both of these drivers, they both have wins in pro alcohol. They the, haven't uh, yet won a pro slammer event in 400 Thunder drag racing. The nerves will be high. The revs will be high very soon. McLean fades, Ham claims it, 572, 413 kilometres an hour. Stephen Ham is your Golf Western All Winter Nationals champion in Pro Slammer. Something just going away for uh, Scott McLean, but you have to say, this team of Stephen Ham's has been, well, perfection all weekend. They were, they were absolutely killer this weekend. Consistent every single pass. They didn't overstep the mark, they were quick, they were fast. He was a good driver as well as reaction times were killer. He gets the win here. McLean, something went away with the engine there, but it was all Stephen Ham. An absolutely emphatic win for that team. But let's ride along with Scotty McLean in the Monaro. The shift lights are all being hit. Everything looked good, but wasn't to be. It was Steve Ham's night. Pro Slammer winner is Stephen Ham. You've been on the money all day. You're top qualified, and you get yourself a gold Christmas tree. Thanks, mate. Uh, look, big thanks to the crew. You know, the car's been going round and round. Stu Rowland just kicked it then. You know, we just repeated, repeated, repeated. Didn't want to really step on it too hard then and make fools of ourselves. So um, hats off to everyone. Um, Royal Lugs, Artie Williams, QRB, they're all on board for a reason. So great times. Couldn't have been happy to be beaten by him. He deserves it. Um, congratulations to them. They've done well, deserve it today. Congratulations to Paul on the championship and uh, to all the Winter Nationals crew and staff and volunteers for making this such an awesome event with all the obstacles that we had, especially with the weather. Well, you're pretty fast. We hope to see you back here in the championship next year. Cheers, Matty. We'll be back. If, if we can find a sponsor, mate, we'll be back to... We'll stick it up, mate. Good and proper. Let's have our final look at the 400 Thunder official merchandise scoreboard. Paul Mahayat wins it comfortably from John Zapia. Ben Bray claimed third in the end from Steve Ham, who jumped all the way from sixth. Emilio Spinozzi, great job to end up in the top five in his first year of racing. Victor Bray on the comeback trail in sixth. Colvin Lyle and Sam Fennick after such strong starts to the season before having accidents. They're just left to wonder what could have been. Well, enough of the rear view. Let's look ahead now because we've got a great season coming up again. We start off with the Atlantic Oil East Coast Thunder at Sydney Dragway on the 1st and 2nd of November. And we're going to run right through the year to end up here again at Willowbank Raceway 
for the Gulf Western Oil Winter Nationals and the grand finale of all the categories. Well, we have got more to come from this year's event, though. Join us next time when we bring you all of the action from All-Star Batteries Pro Alcohol.